Welcome into week 14 of the LL Football Update Show, sponsored by Kegels Produce. He is Jeff Reinhardt. I'm John Walkout here in Denver, PA, where Cocalico is prepping for this Friday's district title game. They're one of two LL League teams competing for district championships this Friday. We'll get to Lampeter Strasburg in a little yeah. bit. First, we're going to talk about the Eagles. Cocalico, here they are again, John. Back to back years in the District 3 5A championship, four straight years in the district semifinals, which is great. Cocalico back again, lost to Mannheim Central last year, so they're, they're looking for a little redemption here, and they get a rematch. Uh, Cedar Cliff will come over here, playing up in the stadium on Friday night. These two teams met back in week two on a Thursday night over in Camp Hill. Cocalico won handily, 43-14. Noah Palm, Noah Palm, Noah Palm. Three touchdown <laughs> runs, a touchdown pass, and a 90-yard fumble return for a touchdown. He was great. Uh, favorite stat of the week, here it is, Noah Palm, 1,000, 1,000 club, 1,001 passing yards, 1,300 rushing yards, ninth player in LL history to have a 1,000, 1,000 season, wow. special season for Noah Palm, he's been fantastic. Great win for them in the semis last week against Warwick, 21-13, Warwick jumps up 13-0 at the half, wow, and Cocalico, or th just before the half, Cocalico scores with four seconds left. Eagles come flying back in the second half, play great and win. So they're playing great. Cedar Cliff, Jaheim Morris, remember the name, 2,300 rushing yards. That's a lot. <laughs> 27 touchdowns. He had 200 plus against Cocalico in the first meeting. He said six 200 yard games, two 300 yard games. He's really good. So, crux of this one is just going to be the defenses. Can Cocalico stop Morris? Can Cedar Cliff stop Palm? and Cocalico's beer, both offenses are really good. So I think this one comes down to the D, the trenches, um, and who can wrap and tackle the best. Should be fun. I'll see you over here for coverage on Friday. Cedar Cliff, Cocalico for the 5A title. All right, and for that, we throw to LMP video reporter Danielle Zukowski. She caught up with Trey Griffin, Ronald Zom, and Coach Gingert to talk about the season, this game, this upcoming game this Friday. Danielle, take it away. So you are back in the district championship game for the second year in a row. What does this mean to you as a coach? Well, I think it means that our program's going in the right direction. Um, I, I heard last week that it was four consecutive semifinals. I thought that was pretty cool, but two district finals is it's great. Um, it's great for our kids. It's great for our program, but uh, it's time to get a win in one of those games. We've been runner-up quite a bit, and that's it's nice to get to the game. And but I don't think this group right here is really satisfied with just showing up and you know collecting the second place medal and stuff like that. I, I think this team has aspirations of doing bigger and better things. And in football, the only way you can do that is by winning. You know the game prior to it, you can't move on unless you win. You're back in the run for the district championship for the second year running. What went into this season to get you here? Um. Um, we just put in a lot of hard work and um, we're doing it all for our coaches, our families and teammates especially. So. And how do you feel knowing that you're a senior, um, this is your last shot, what, what are the emotions going into this game? I mean everything's on the line in this game. Like our, uh, either schools haven't won a championship in like 20 years I heard so a lot's on the line so we just got to do everything we got to do to prepare. And you've already played Cedar Cliff. What are you guys doing um, to prepare for this game after having already had a chance to play this opponent? Uh, I think, honestly, we're just trying to flush what happened week two. I mean, that has nothing to do with what's coming up this Friday. They've gotten a lot better, but we have as well. So we're just trying to group together and get stuff ready for Friday. I know offensively uh, some things that we're going to try to accomplish this time that we didn't do last time. Uh, and then defensively, I'm sure defensive coaches will come up with a good game plan to try to shut down their they got a great running attack and their quarterbacks throwing the ball really well right now okay Danielle thanks a lot for those interviews Trey Griffin Ronald Zom coach Gingrich good luck to those guys thanks for letting us poke around practice here this week I'll see you over here Friday for Cedar Cliff and Cocalico can't wait okay 4A championship Lampeter Strasburg still dancing the eight seeds they take on number three, 
Berks Catholic, break that one down. Yeah, what a magical run it's been for Lampeter Strasburg. Knocked off top seed to York Suburban in the quarterfinals, and then last week come back from down 20 to nothing at halftime to beat Bishop McDevitt on wow. the road. Now they go on the road again mm -hmm. at number three seed, Berks Catholic. Berks, by the way, they've been here plenty of times. Seventh year in a row that they've been to a district title game. Yep. Four and two in the last six district title appearances for Berks Catholic is. And uh, both teams love to run the ball here. Mm -hmm. LS run first, although they're a little bit more well-balanced offensively. They can pass the ball with Connor Knoll, yep. as we've seen. Whereas Berks Catholic, looking over their numbers there, run, 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 averaging 218 rush yards per game to just 36 passing yards per lot. game. And you think, okay, who has the defensive edge here? Mm -hmm. They're both giving up 248 total yards per game, so about uh. even there. Berks might have the edge in takeaways, 31, 31 takeaways this season. Got to keep an eye on that. Turnovers is always big in any type of game. Um, by the way, a stat that I got to give out to uh, PIAA District 3 stat guy, whoever you want to call him, Rod Frisco, mm -hmm. uh, for keeping tabs on this stat. In the history of the District 3 playoffs, there's only been one number eight seed that has won a District 3 championship. Uh -huh. That was Redland back in 2006, Class 3A wow. beat Southwestern. Keep that in mind this Friday. LS is number eight seed going to number three seed, Brooks Catholic. Wow. We'll have all of your coverage again on Friday, so feel free to follow along with us on Friday. I'll be at LS game. You'll be here with uh, Cocalico. Yep. All right, thanks to uh, Cocalico for having us out. For Jeff Reinhardt, I'm John Walk. We'll catch you next week.